You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrestling Nerdcast on the Angry Marks Podcast Network with your host, Will Huckabee and Mika Villas. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, it's that time of the week. It's time for the Wrestling Nerdcast. And this week, as usual, this is a fan source, crowdfunded, whatever you want to call it, sponsored show. So if you like what you hear on this show, if you like our guests, if you like to keep bringing, bringing awesome guests uh, on this show for you to listen to, all about their lives, wrestling and out of wrestling and stuff, be sure to check us out. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com backslash the Wrestling Nerdcast. Once again, this is the Wrestling Nerdcast on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Huge shout out to our sponsors, Indie Customs. Be sure to check them out on Facebook, Indie Customs, Twitter at in the underscore customs for all of your pro wrestling and non pro wrestling merchandise needs. While you're over there, while you're on your computer doing all your ordering from Indie Customs, be sure to say what's up to our friends over there at Pro Wrestling World. Pro Wrestling World for all of the go there for all of your, you know, pro wrestling gossip and news of who's doing what and when and why and who got injured from what move, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then, just in case you know, if you've done all of this ordering and checked out all this gossip and stuff, you've got all these cookies and viruses, hit up our friends at Behavior Driven. That's right, Behavior Driven. Those are the guys that I talk to when I'm having technical issues and not just like computer stuff. Like they help me out with like fixing my washing machine and everything. So check out our good friends at Behavior Driven. As usual, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am your host. The AIWF World Heavyweight Champion, the World Wrestling Grand Prix Champion. As of this past Friday, I am your National Syndicate Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, the disrespectful intellectual, the Southern Gentleman, the Morning Star, a national icon and reality TV star, the Incredible Huck, Will Huckabee. And this is going to be an episode. Uh, but before I even get to the episode, uh, I want to say that this episode is brought to you and specially sponsored by uh, that good Himalayan water blessed by Tibetan monks. I'm enjoying a big, huge glass of it right now, along with my co-host. She is one half of the world's cutest commentary team. She is the lover of waffles, the voice of the speech impediment, the Aphrodite of affection. Miss Chicago win. Miss Hashtag, what that mouth do, a.k.a. where the tacos at. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, she doesn't need a mic really because she's just that loud, Mika Villas. Hello, hello, and oh my gosh, I need a drink before we start, and typically I'm drinking water. Look at the size of your glass. Oh. That I'm looking at his glass, guys, it's not a wine glass, it's a goblet. It's probably um, like about 120 ounces. It is huge, and then he's pouring more. Oh, um, this is going to be bad. I can there fit there. about... Uh, right now, Mika, before, like, I'm, I'm drinking some, uh, this is my first time trying it, some red Moscato, um, mm. the regular standard bottle, uh, and I can almost fit an entire bottle of wine in this glass, so, uh, this is my kind of wine glass right here, I'm not gonna lie about it. Yeah, first of all, kudos to you for drinking wine, I'm drinking, um, red strawberry apple ale or what have you, so, and it's really good, it's limited time only, so I'm enjoying the hell out of this, but um, yeah. This episode is going to be, this, we don't have a great gentleman, first of all, we don't have a guest tonight um, because this is our, this episode will be our, our letter to professional wrestling. Um, but before we get into that, uh, Mika, how was your weekend? My weekend was actually pretty quiet. Um, you know, we were coming off a huge, huge wrestling few days, so I literally just relaxed. I didn't go anywhere wrestling related. I checked in on a couple shows. Um, I know up in the New Jersey area, our friends at Wrestlers Lab, they, look at this goblet, it's ridiculous. They put on a hell of a show. Um, my, um, People, we both know the hierarchy went north to New Jersey and conquered. Were you and, there? Were and you I, there? The show? Were you there? I, I was not. I was there in spirit. I was throwing up the two fingers salute in spirit because uh, I Jimmy Rave came back um, and yes. and, re, and rejoined or got back with the hierarchy or they beat down Mr. Grimm. I mean, however you want to say it, the the Godfather, the co-creator of the hierarchy. The crown jewel. I, I don't know if you caught because uh, they they just claimed that Joe Joe Black was the crown jewel yes. of the heart. Like so, I, I don't want to fake any dissension in the ranks. I don't want to 
stir the proverbial pot. There could be two crown jewels. I mean, in a crown, there is more than one jewel. The crown, there's, there's, there's jewels, and then there's the crown jewel. Hey, I'm just going to say, there there is a crown jewel for every king or queen who comes forward. They all have their own specialty, their own thing that makes them unique. And we can say that Jimmy Rave is, of course, a, a entity, a uniqueness in himself, being the longest reigning um, GWC champion and Joe Black, of course, he is an entity, all his own creation and making himself. So there could be two crown jewels because there are two different versions of so, this. So what else did you do this weekend? I, that's it. I, I, um, I literally just kind of studied wrestling. I watched a lot. I caught up on some of the G1. Um, oh, did, you the, did you watch the G1 from LA? Yes. From the Cow Palace? All right. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, yeah. Friday, I was in Columbus, Georgia, which once again, I was right there in your neck of the woods, like an hour and a half away, and you even stopped by to say what's up. Oh, uh, you didn't tell me you were there. I mean, I, I, said, I, said, last I said last week's show. I said last week's show. I don't listen to you at all, really and truly. But I was, I was in Columbus, Georgia, uh, main event for the, uh, National Syndicate Wrestling Heavyweight Championship against one, uh, Cameron Jackson. Um, had some help. I'm not gonna lie. Had some help with some friends of mine, some really old friends of mine. Uh, one Brian Blaze and Shane Marks. Uh, you know, now, you know, they got the hierarchy. Now you got the Ian saying, you got me, uh, Shane Marks and Brian Blaze is a- I like a, Shane Marks. Why would he do such a thing? Why would he help you? Cause I'm the biggest, I'm the biggest dog in the yard. That's why. Uh, but I'm now the current and I now have another title. So call me, uh, really three belts. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> just call me Will Three Belts. Three, our three belt, Will, the three belt kid. You know, everybody else got their little two titles, uh, but I have three. So it's whatever. Uh, and unlike a much, unlike most people who say, oh, this is our world title, uh, two out of my three titles have already been overseas and around the world. Uh, and the third one will be making this trip around the world by the end of this year. So I'm a real world champion. Um, and then from Columbus, Georgia, took that uh, 14-hour drive to uh, Salina, Kansas, which is right outside Kansas City for uh, XWE Extreme Wrestling Entertainment. Um, defending my AIWF World Heavyweight title there uh, against Drake Gallows and uh, Kyle Kelly. Uh, really good man, a really good show. Uh, I, I really like the promoter there. Billy Simmons, a really good promoter. Uh, had a good time. Um, the funny thing, and, and, and I don't know why, and Mika, this is something that you may uh, actually appreciate. Uh, the show was inside the ballroom of a hotel, um, but they actually rented space inside the hotel. So, like, they train. Their training center is inside this hotel. Um, That's amazing. So, I like so that. Their, so their ballroom is rented out, you know, 24, like, throughout the month. And just in case they have, like, you know, a quinceanera or... Uh, wedding or whatever, they can actually, uh, because it's carpet in the air, in that room, um, they can actually slide the ring. You get the, you get the boys and stuff, uh, half on one side, half on the other side. They can actually push the ring, uh, into this little section, uh, off to the side so they don't have to break the ring down anymore. So okay. it's really cool. And then of course, like, because they run a wrestling company, um, they have a great deal with the hotel. Uh, to get rooms for cheap and stuff. Uh, myself and a couple other guys stayed in the hotel. Uh, they actually had a really good, uh, concert of a breakfast bar. Nothing like the Embassy Suites, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but it was better than just, you know, cereal and like some oranges and apples. Uh, okay. <laughs> but I had that show. Yes, continental breakfast. Uh, and then from there, it was that long 16 hour drive back, uh, back home and stuff from, uh, basically Kansas City, Missouri. But, it was a really good trip. Uh, I was in there with, uh, rolled with, uh, the Get Bundles and George South Training Movie Mike. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you right now, if you don't know who Movie Mike is, uh, this kid is incredible. Uh, has a great presence about him. Not the biggest of guys, but he has a really good look. But his gimmick is so great. Like, you have to check him out on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. Just check him out, Movie Mike. Uh, that's M-Y-K. I, um, um, but what was we about to talk about? Oh, the G1 at the Cow Palace. The world famous Cow Palace. Uh, MSG of the West. I don't yes. even like that title. I'm gonna call it the Opera of the West. Because, <laughs> of, my, because of my opinion, the Opera, the uh, MSG or the Hammerstein Ballroom is the Opera of the North. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, we'll call the Cow Palace the Opera of the West. Anyway, what was your take? 
or on the G1 special? Again, it's New Japan, and they're in America. They, they, there's enough hype surrounding it that even when it's, I don't want to call it a bad show, it was a good show, but even when it's just a regular show, it comes out outstanding because it's New Japan, and because they're bringing all these people here to America, this side of the, the ocean, I guess, doing their thing. I mean, let's just talk about the biggest news is, you know, a horrible, horrible injury that took place. I mean, everything else kind of pales in comparison. That's what the takeaway is for me. Like, a broken neck. He currently well, yes. shit. You know? Well, unfortunately, a shout out to Hiromu Takahashi uh, for for having a broken neck uh, wrestling with Dragon Lee, and that really sucks. Um, him and Dragon Lee have had some amazing matches. That's one of my favorite rivalries in New Japan. Is those two gentlemen? Um, it was just a, it was just bad luck. You know, usually they've done that move. I don't know how many times. Uh, and usually Dragon Lee holds on to his neck throughout the suplex. Uh, and this time he let him go. And with that type of suplex, you really can't do a release, um, unless, you know, you're very perpendicular to the mat. Um, or parallel, I'm sorry, parallel to the mat. Uh, that way the guy could just kind of land, just roll through it. Um, he was just very high up and stuff. A little too high up. Released him too early, I think. Um, for me, the big thing was Bullet Club. Like, what in the world, man? Uh, the Tongans have said F you. Yes, that was, if you watch New Japan, if you followed, um, the Tongans, this is not a shock really to me because there was seeds of dissension when we were going back and forth with who runs the Bullet Club, where Cody's Bullet Club's okay, and Cody tagged with them at one point. I don't think it was a special, um, I can't remember, but where they were just kind of like over Cody and his his antics, so to speak. So it's not a huge, huge shock to me because there was seeds of this planted along the way. You just had to kind of put those, um, well, those I was, I was, pieces together. I, I was very, I was very uh, uh, shocked because they turned on Chase Owens and, and Ujio. Ujiro also, uh, you know, Chase Holmes was the whole, you know, both of those guys were honorary Tongan, uh, and then they got jumped on just like everybody else. So I guess we'll see what's going to happen with the Bullet Club and New Japan and everything. Um, congratulations to Juice Robinson for being the IWGP US champion. Uh, that was a spectacular move. Um, get well soon to Jim Ross, the legendary JR, who I guess yes. suffered from broken ribs. Um, which, which, which brings me to, uh, tonight's subject. Um, there's a couple of things that I have to get off my chest. And, and this weekend, I think, was just like the end all be all because I just saw like some reckless things, uh, not only at the shows that I was at, that I was at, but also online. And, and so, you know, I'm just tired of it. And I'm just going to get this off my chest. If people listen, then fine. If they don't, then fine. Whatever. Um, first of all, and Mika, you go to shows just as much as I do. Um, can we, can, can guys stop being reckless? Uh, I'm, I'm tired of guys fighting out in the crowd and just, and, and just being reckless and not caring who's, uh, who's around, not watching out for, for children or old people or, or adults or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, like I would admit that, I, that on both shows that I was on this weekend, I got thrown into the crowd, but at the same time, I, I made sure, you know, I controlled my body and made sure that nobody got hit. I get so tired of seeing guys doing reckless, stupid shit on shows. Like, you, got, you ahead. were aware of your surroundings. You were conscientious of there are people who have paid to be here, who paid to see me that are not part of the show that yes, while we're going to do something or work in the crowd, we cannot work the crowd into our match. They are not trained professionals and they should not be getting, you know, hit. That's kind of. Yeah, as, as, as a fan, as, as, as a commentator and a fan, uh, what is your opinion on these guys and stuff who like, you know, they're fighting the crowd and somebody gets hit. Um, a child gets hit, an old person gets knocked down. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what is it? A wall, somebody hits, knocks a hole into a wall or breaks some equipment that, that wasn't supposed to be broken. Cause we've been at shows where, you know, guys are fighting this stuff. Um, All the above has happened, yes. <laughs> yeah, people got hit. Uh, what was that? At AWE, uh, when they were on, uh, what was that road? There was a museum bar. No, before the museum bar. The building before the museum bar. Uh, Campbellton Road. 
Yeah, on Camelton Road where guys fucking knocked a hole into the DJ booth. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and then like you said, the museum bar, they broke the door. So guys, just like, remember, this is not your shit. Like this is not your stuff. And, and, and these people aren't a part of the show. You know what I'm saying? Now, as a fan, it's, it's twofold for me. And even as a commentator and, and working for these different promotions, um, we live in a, and you guys work in an era where People are constantly challenging the legitimacy of wrestling, saying it's fake, that, you know, you guys don't hit hard, that this is all stage, it's all acrobatic, and what have you. So while there are people who are at these shows who, you know, may not think it's real, real, they don't feel that it is such a a danger when people work into the crowd or when wrestlers go out into the crowd to fight Well, they'll sit in their seats or they'll stand in their chairs or they'll get really, really close, not realizing that you said you controlled your body. There is, if you pull back for a punch, nine out of 10, you're not pulling back and looking behind you when you're working the crowd. You're just going to pull back and there could be some idiot fan who stood up to get a closer look, moved in for a shot with their camera phone or what have you, who's going to catch that elbow. So as an adult, it is your responsibility as well to, yes, if the action is near you and you want to see, step back, get a great vantage point, but don't get so close where you could get injured. It's like watching a fight on the street. You're not just going to really walk up to these people who are fighting in the street and go, hey, I'm going to get real close with my camera phone and watch. You're going to stand the hell back. It should be the same difference. Now, again, as a, a wrestler working in the crowd, you have to take into the account the crowd where you're working, if there are children. Because if there are children present, kids are going to be children. They're going to run and get close and just be all in the way. So you have to know, like, okay, what kind of show am I at? I assume, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you kind of assess the crowd before your match, that you're watching and listening and you know oh. where the drunk people are, where, you know, the, the the marks are, where the real fans are, where people are, you know, smart fans or what have you, and you might want to pick that side of the ring or the crowd to work in or away from, depending on how that crowd is laid out. But it's, and, it's a twofold yeah. for me. Yeah, well, I just, I, I just seen some really reckless people this weekend, and it just it pissed me off. And something else that I wanted to talk about that you just actually mentioned is guys watching the show. Um, my finisher a lot of times um, is is a spawn buster um, because I'm a huge Arn Anderson mark and stuff. So I usually use a spawn buster, uh, but I've started using like a torture rack and, and on special occasions I'll use the package fire bomb that you've seen me. But usually I use a spawn bomb. Um, when I'm not at the top of a card, if I'm not the main event, um, I would go around and I would ask every other card, every other match that's, that's after my match, hey, um, what mat, what are y'all using as a finish? You know what I'm saying? Uh, is there any big spots that you guys plan on doing that I need to know about so we don't do it? I, that, I specifically do that. Um, especially if it's a place that I haven't worked at for a while. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. Uh, I may not be, you know, Ric Flair or Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels or even, you know, the Young Bucks, but if I'm at the top of your card and if your promotion is bringing me in to defend one of my world titles, uh, give me the respect, at least, of being in the main event and ask me what my finish is going to be. Uh, there were, on one of the shows, there was three Spawn Busters, on the other show, there was four spawn busters. Um, not only that, uh, I, 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 the shit that chased my ass, and you know I'm mad, Mika, because uh, I just used the word chase. I just used the phrase chase my ass. Uh, watch your fucking time, people. You sound both like shows, motor right now. Both sh- well, but here's the thing. I was the main event for both shows, and both shows ran obsessively long. Because guys were trying to be what my homeboy Buns called some gamzy ass dudes, just get all my shit in as guys. Um, these guys were supposed to go, you know, eight to ten, maybe ten to twelve, and they're going fifteen, twenty, thirty fucking minutes. Uh, when you go over and it, it, it automatically makes a two and a half hour show, 
a three to three and a half hour show. Mm-hmm. And by the time the main event comes on, half of the fucking crowd is gone. Yep. Um, the crowd is tired. They've been there too long. There's only so much interest you can gauge. There's only so much sitting on my ass I can do as an audience member that I'm, I'm not going to sit here for all this. Um, and the crowds are smart nowadays. We know when you're over your time. We can tell that you're just trying to get your shit in. How, how is that? How is that, Mika? How can you tell? <clears throat> There's a lot of um, false finishes in matches where you're doing these huge moves and you're like, okay, this is it. Oh, these fuckers are still going. Oh my God, they're not stopping. I, I, I'm not going to name names or matches, but there was a match that I saw with this month, actually, I believe it was, that probably should have been an eight minute match. That went about 25. They just kept fighting. And it was like, yo, I'm going to get up and bust somebody in your face. This shit should be over. Um, it was Mika, ridiculous. I'm, Mika, I'm telling you, um, on Friday night at, 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 in Columbus, Georgia. Now, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about how the guys back because I told one of the guys that was in the match. I was like, yeah, uh, thank you for going, you know, 25 fucking minutes. Um, and doing all these high spots, including... A belly to belly off the top row, uh, a superplex off the top row. That wasn't a finish. Uh, the, no, the finish. I called the finish. I was in the back watching the show, and I was like, I guarantee it's a schoolboy, and he's gonna pull the trunks. And they did all these hot spots, spears, Mr. Steer into the pole, all of this shit, and the finish was a schoolboy pull the trunks for no reason. Because for no reason. You, I mean, like there is a such thing as um. Pardon me why I get a little gross here. It's blowing your load. You do a belly to belly and a suplex off the top rope. You blew your load, man. You're done. Pick up your dick, shake it off, and get the fuck out of the ring. Why? Why would you just keep going? That's crazy. They Again. Did. They did. And yeah. like I said, then, and then Saturday, uh, there was a couple of matches where guys, like you said, they could have had really good eight to 10 minute matches and they stretched them out to 12 to 15, 20 minute matches. And when every match goes over, and, and I don't know if you people listening to this, anybody who's listening to this, uh, who's in the business, who's actual wrestler, uh, I don't know if you know this, but every time you go over, even two to three minutes, um, that, 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 that pushes the show and stretches the time of the show by a minimum of five to ten. For every like two to three minutes you go over, the show is now that the, the show, especially if the main event really wants to give the fans their money's worth, um, it's going to make the show five to ten minutes long, at least five minutes longer, uh, because they're not the main event is not going to cut their time. So therefore, if you have eight matches. And seven, and the first seven matches all go three minutes over. You know, that's an extra 21 fucking minutes. Um, and so now, instead of the show being two and a half hours long, it's going to be three and a half, three fifteen, three and a half. Like you've almost added a whole nother hour onto the fucking show. Let me ask you, being that you are a main eventer in a lot of these places and you work at so many different promotions, um, I'm sorry. I thought TW just put welcome to raw. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that that is that is true, but I mean because we're in a different era now. But there were back in the uh, the the Attitude era, the Divas era, and what have you, where their matches were way too long. It was like, yo, stop this shit because it should have been over a long time ago. But in the independence here, where everybody is a little bit kind of wild westy, no. just, a, just a little bit because again they're going over. I mean, you have you have promotions that will time out the the matches, knowing that they're performers. They're people who are known for going over. So let's let me just call you, you know, um, Billy Youngbuck, a YZ kid, you know, good kid or whatever. But we know he's gonna go. We tell him his matches by eight minutes. We know he's gonna go twelve. So we're gonna tell him, you know what, you got a five minute match. So we'll get somewhere on the average. No, no, you tell but people the- doing that. But the thing is, it's like, no, instead of saying, oh, you know you want him to go 8 to 10, and you tell him 5, how about you just tell him, hey, look, you got 8 to 10 minutes. If you go over, motherfucker, we're ringing the fucking bell, or I'm going to send this big motherfucker to I'm going to send these two big motherfuckers to the ring to just fucking squash both of you. I'm going to send two legit shooters to the ring to beat the fuck out of both of you. Um, like, that literally almost happened Friday night. Like, we're sitting back there, and I was like, 
where's a 911 gimmick when you need one? Like me and the guy that I was working with in the main event, Cameron Jackson, we were both looking at the promoter and was like, hey, how about we just run to the ring, beat the shit out of both of these guys, um, and then we'll start on, after we beat the fuck out of them, we'll look at each other and be like, oh shit, I don't even like you. Ring the bell. And that's how we'll start the main event. <laughs> wow. How much, like, now here's, here's my fandom coming in. So you, that was something that could have happened. What about the referees in the match? I mean, because there's got to be somebody in charge. There's always somebody in Who's charge. On, here's the thing. Those guys, most of these fuckers are on, like, the indies. And if, and if you feel insulted right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm probably talking about you. Um, especially all of you indie darlings and shit. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Um, they don't listen to the referee. The referee will be like, hey, guys, take it home. The referee says take it home. That means you got, you know, 60 seconds or three moves, whichever is shorter. But go, go ahead and start taking it home, you know. These guys, the referee's like, okay, go ahead and take it home. The guy's like, okay, we still got another five minutes of shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, quit, make, quit, like, when all these, all you fuckers out there talking about, oh, don't be a mark for your business, don't be a mark for yourself. How about you just don't be a mark for yourselves, all right? Like, the hell, I'm, I'm, I'm much more, I will agree with you more if you say, hey, I'm a huge fan of, you know, Keith Lee, like, fuck if I meet, like, yo, I really want to meet Keith Lee, like, I'm a huge fan of his. That's fine with me. Don't be a fucking mark for your fucking self, because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, you may think that you're the shit, but I'm going to tell you right now, all of you fuckers out here who think that you're having these great fucking matches, you suck ass, and if you can only have a great match with motherfuckers who are also envy darlings, then you are a real fucking worker. If you can't have a match with a kid who's only had three fucking matches and make the fans believe and make the fans say, hey, you know what? Well, it wasn't the worst fucking match. That was actually pretty fucking good. If you can't work with one of these young ass green kids, don't fucking, tr- don't fucking flatter yourself. You're not fucking good whatsoever. I'm really getting tired of you motherfuckers on Twitter and Instagram and everything saying, oh, you know, we had a kick ass match. You're supposed to have a kick ass match. If you work OVE, or Sammy Callahan, or Shane Strickland, or you know, say MJF, or one of these guys, and you have a shitty fucking match, then then you should burn your fucking boots. Let me see you have that same fucking caliber match with a fucking six month green hole. Can you still have a good fucking match with some six month green hole? You know what I'm saying? Thursday, I worked with a fucking kid uh, at USA Championship Wrestling in Bluefield, West Virginia. If you you watch my fucking Facebook Live or whatever. Uh, you saw the match on, you saw me on Facebook Live or so. Um, that kid might have had 10 fucking matches. Mm. He might have been working 10 years. I mean, he'd been working for like, he'd been training or whatever, been in the business for like two, three years, had done a back, run about, bunch of battle rules, but he might have had like 10, maybe 15 legitimate matches in two years. Uh, was it the fucking best match of the night? No. Was it the worst match of the night? Not by a long fucking shot. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and a lot of the fans were, and this is me, yeah, I'm going to toot my own horn right here. There was a lot of people who really enjoyed the fucking match because I was like, okay, well, we can't dazzle you with all of these slippy, spotty shit, so we'll just make it as realistic as possible, and we'll just beat the fuck out of each other. And not literally beat the fuck out. I'm end up, I can't work because I'm bruised the hell up and pissing blood, you know, but we're just going to work really fucking tight. Right. And and I watched that on your Facebook, and I like to give you hell, but until you just said it, I had no clue that that kid was so inexperienced. So again, it's it like it's like any other field where you have someone who, if you train them or you're working with them, you want to do a good job because you want them to do a good job because it makes you look even better, especially if you bring them up to your level or at least make it believable or, or credible in a sense. Um, so let, let's go back to your, your people who are just marks for themselves. Um, and we're, we're talking about these, you know, you call them indie darlings or what have you. Who stops them? Because, again, this is a pattern. They're not just doing this one or two places. They're doing it everywhere. They're doing it everywhere they're going. Who stops them? Who Who puts the kibosh on it? Um, and is it their a locker room leader being the champ? Is that the champ's job? Is the promoter's job? Um, I, I would figure that somebody somewhere um, has got to sit them down and make them pay attention or at least respect the times that they're given. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. It's damn sure not going to be the fucking promoters. 
let's let's go ahead and say that right now. Most of these promoters um, are are marks so where you you got like you know you got a couple thousand dollars, um, you you own a car lot, and that's no knock to Ken Obrowski or or fucking Tracy Myers because those guys for the most part know what the fuck they're doing. Okay, um, I might not agree with everything that AML and PWX does, but for the most I, part, I'm gonna fight you over Kanabroski. That's my, you know. I like Kanabroski. That's why he was on the show. So I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about these other fucking these these tax these income tax promoters and these fuckers who marry you know women who have money and stuff, or whether they swindle somebody else. You know these mother the motherfuckers who are, here's a okay I'm gonna this here's the people who won't stop indie darlings from going over their fucking time. If you if you would pay Enzo Amore more than seven hundred and fifty fucking dollars, you are a problem in this fucking business. If you would pay Ric Flair ten thousand fucking dollars, or you would pay Sting, the, the the legend, the icon known as Sting, ten thousand dollars to put on his fucking makeup, you are a fucking problem in this goddamn business. There is no reason why fucking Ric Flair or Sting or any other WWE fucking E wrestler, a former WWE wrestler is making more in one fucking night than the average person is going to make in a fucking six fucking months, first of all. So, to answer your question, um, who, sol- who, who solves it? Uh, the other fucking wrestlers. But the problem with that is, with me, as, as a wrestler, if I say something, and I've been on shows like this, Mika, if I tell a promoter or the booker, hey, look, can we say something to these fuckers about going over on their time? Um, I look like, and now it looks like I'm a fucking issue. Like, I'm a fucking problem because they're like, oh, but well, the fans enjoy it. You know what else the fans would enjoy? Being home before fucking midnight. You know what I would enjoy? Being home before 11 fucking 30 at night. Like, I would enjoy the fuck out of that. Preach. Hello. Uh, while I'm talking about these fucking events, uh, the last thing I want to talk about, us two more, um, but on the same vein as this, can, can we stop, can we somewhere, some kind of way, um, can we come up with a, a a a list of what makes you a wrestling vet and what doesn't? What makes you a wrestling? Okay. What makes what do you consider um, a, a veteran I, I status I or a uh, non-veteran I, status? Then I mean, if that I, I would be that, uh, I, well, let's see here because I've been talking a lot. Let's see yours, me. I gotta take a sip of my big huge goblet of wine. You don't need none of that wine. You are fired the fuck up. Pardon my French. I don't know. Okay. So here's here's where I think. You are a vet. If you have some knowledge, experience of years in the business, you don't necessarily have to be a commercial success, meaning WWE, TNA, or what have you, but you at least need to have the respect and acknowledgement of your peers um, and people just above you. I'll tell you who I consider a vet here in the Southeast, somebody who... um, people don't know and maybe don't know yet or should know, Slim J. I think Slim J is a vet. He has been doing this for a long time. He has been um, not a commercial success, but he is a success in this area. His work, his wrestling is bar second to none. Well, that's because when, when Slim J comes, when, when, when a name or whatever you want to call it comes in his area, uh, whatever company Slim J works for, they entrust Slim J to work with that person. And that's the sign of a veteran. A veteran is somebody who, no matter what, you can put somebody in the ring, whether it be a greenhorn or somebody who you don't want damage to, and you know that he is going to take care of them first and foremost. That's I, I, a professional and veteran at the same time. I, I say that because Saturday night, my buddy Movie Mike was in a four-way match uh, with three gentlemen who had all been working for the better part of 15, 20 years. Um and they completely just shit on him. Whoa, really? Um, he took all the bumps, he took all the heat, and he took the finish of the match twice. Um, and, and it really pissed me off. And I was sitting there watching. How do you take a finish twice? I mean, a finish is a finish. Because the finish got blown and they had to redo it. Oh. Because these vets didn't know how to cover a match. They didn't know how to cover a blown spot. Um but I'm sitting there, you know, because Movie Mike traveled to Kansas City with me. And I'm sitting there watching his match, sitting right beside the fucking promoter. Uh, and when the guys come back from the match, the vets come back, and we're like, hey, what y'all think? And it was like, oh, he goes, the match is cool. 
But we really wish that you would have gave the kid a lot more, um, especially for the fact that you guys knew that he was going to take all of your big moves, he was going to take all the bumps, and he had to take the finish. You really should have shined the kid up some. Uh, all right. And this is the promoter that said that. I haven't even said anything. The promoter and Booker said this. Uh, and the, one of the vets in the match looked at Movie Mike and was like, and basically, and I'm going to paraphrase this, was like, we didn't have to give him anything. The fact that he was in the ring with us is payment enough. He needs to pay his dues before we give him anything. Whoa. That's the biggest load of bullshit ever. Again, now, go ahead. Now, no, no. Let me tell you that these motherfuckers, first of all, had a drizzling shits match. Uh, they blew every fucking spot known to fucking man. Um, and, and just, it just really rubbed me the wrong way. Go ahead, Mika. Holy F and A. I mean, like, seriously, part of your fraternity, part of wrestling is when you're in the ring, you take care of one another. That means physically as well as putting them over, making sure that the other person looks as good as you do. You're not supposed to shit on them and make them look bad. And you're sure as hell not supposed to say that shit out loud. I mean, again, I don't take bunk. So somebody stop me if I'm wrong. But being in the ring with you is not payment enough. You've got people who have made millions of dollars doing this on a national, global level who make people who are fresh into the business look good. So who are you, backwater-ass country motherfucker, pardon my French again, to say, oh, being in the ring with me is good enough? The fuck out of here! Yeah, yeah. That, like, that's, that's just something like, I've always felt like if you're in the ring with somebody, your goal is to make them look good. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times I've taken fucking stupid-ass, ridiculous bumps to make my opponent look good. I'm like, hey, when I come up with spots and come into the ring, when I come to a match or whatever, we're going to talk about the match or whatever, a lot of times it's never, hey, I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do, I don't want to do this to you. It's, hey, how about you do this to me? And I'm going to try to go, and you hit me with this. Because I know the better that you look, the better I'm going to look. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, I think we've talked about this before, is people who are talking about this, the killing the business, um, and what's bad for business and what, and people clamoring for old school wrestling and shit. Um, and, and along with that is this whole intergender wrestling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this and then I'll let you jump in. All right, Mika. Uh, if you were enhancement talent for WWE, WCW, et cetera, et cetera, and you're not Johnny Rods or George South, shut the fuck up. Your opinion means nothing to me because you were enhancement talent, but you didn't even make a living at being enhancement talent, okay? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Rods was the guy for WWE. You didn't get a job in New York unless Johnny Rods gave you the stamp of approval. Uh, whenever Ric Flair was in the Mid-Atlantic area, the first and only person he wanted to work with, and it wasn't a name or somebody he was in a feud with, was George South. Um, so unless, you know, you're of that quality, that caliber, uh, I don't give a shit what you say when it comes to what's killing this business and what's not. Go ahead, Mika. Well, I take a sip of my Tibetan water, less by, uh, Himalayan monks or I've been, that way. I've been chugging this beer because I'm like, damn it. I don't usually agree with you on things, but tonight we're just hitting all types of clicks and cylinders. I know. Um, so there, good. there, there is a, there is a legitimate, um, movement out there where people say, oh, this is killing the business. Oh, this is killing the business. There is a shift. And I believe wrestling is like most cultures. It changes. It shifts. It grows. It comes back. It goes forward. It's like a wave where there's something that goes up and it's just the best thing ever, and you'll get a couple crashes down where it's just like, well, that's incredibly stupid and dumb. Um, but the business will never die because the business is to fool people into making this believable, to to making it a, a, an escape, an enjoyment, where everybody's not going to like what you do, but there's going to be somebody, even the most stupidest thing, there's going to be one person or some people who are going to enjoy it and like it. So to say that you're an expert and that your opinion matters in wrestling and you're, again, not one of these people who have literally paved the way and taught 
and and been the gate the gatekeepers for these different um, stars and what have you, then you can say what you want to say. You're entitled to your opinion, but understand that you're being an asshole like your opinion. And nobody and, wants to hear that shit. And nobody wants to hear that shit. But there's, there's a reason why. There's a reason why George South has a very successful wrestling school, and Bullpain had three fuckers show up to his seminar. There's a fucking difference. I almost spit this beer out all over my laptop. Yes. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I listen all the time and I watch that there are a lot of people doing seminars. And the running joke is anybody could do a seminar. Hell, I could do a seminar right now. I'm not an expert by any may, way, shape, or form. And nor should I come off thinking my opinion is the best. But some of these people doing seminars are really hardcore into the fact that, oh, I did this. I can tell you that we we joked about this, not you and I, but um, I, I joked about this before. I have been on more Raws and Smackdowns in the, on camera, I had more camera time than a lot of the people who have done enhancement talent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm qualified by that right to be doing a seminar, you but I know should that. You get the sad card. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, like, people are talking about, like, oh, these gimmicks don't make any sense. Uh, and I'm bringing this up because, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen it by now, like, I forgot the name of it. It's like Future Stars of Wrestling or something. Uh, there's a tag team match, and there's a fucker dressed up like Michael Jackson who did a Moonwalk DDT. Um, and I thought, and I popped so hard for it. A, because I'm a Michael Jackson fan. Uh, B, because I was like, holy shit, why didn't anybody else think of that shit first? Um, but of course you have these bitter fuckers who are like, oh, it's stuff like that that's killing the business. Um, and I sent you and CW a picture uh, of a, a female luchador and probably what could be considered the most, um, what's the word I want to look at? What's the word I want to say, Nika? Politically incorrect outfit. Most adult themed outfit. Okay. Very good. Uh, that too. Uh, I will say that uh, I would not will be yeah. personally. We'll post, a, we'll post a link to it uh, somewhere. <laughs> and we'll post, post only, please. No, no, no. We're gonna post a picture because I also want to post this picture beside it because I, I, I see the picture and of course there's people like oh uh, everybody who was on that that worked that show should be kicked out of the business that promoter should be kicked out of the business. What's the difference between that and fucking Bastion Booger? No. No difference at all. What's the difference between what's the difference between that and old up oily fat guy that was in the thong in ECW or whatever, you know, greasy? I don't know what he was. Like, what's the difference between you know, um, you know, White Mike and 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 guy, guys like White Mike and whatever when he did that spot with Effie and all them in that, that IWA uh, show uh, down in Alabama? What's the difference between that and those goofy ass fucking? Uh, gimmicks that WWE had back in the 80s, like the Goon, you know, and the Repo Man. Like, and, and God, for God's sake, fucking Diesel was the Wizard of Oz and the Yeti. <laughs> like, don't say that, you know, professional wrestling now is a joke when half of you fuckers talk a shit about how wrestling used to be so great in the good old days. You had the dumbest gimmicks alive. You know what I'm saying? Um, you were the Yetis and the Goons and the Bastion Boogers and the Aldo Montoyas and stuff wearing a jock strap on your fucking face. Like, don't, how dare you talk shit about wrestling now? Right. Like, these kids are making way more fucking money than you are in two to three days on just merch sales. Like, kiss my ass. Like, shit like that pisses me off. Between that and, and everybody talking about, oh, intergender wrestling is wrong. Uh, Mika, this is the last thing we're talking about before we go, because my, my glass is almost empty. It's <laughs> Um What is your take on intergender wrestling? I see absolutely positively no problem at all with intergender wrestling. I know I, of girls who, all of these girls, Train with male counterparts. They're not training with all girls. This is not, I know not to Japan because it's a whole different system over there, but this is not Japan where it's just all female dojos or what have you. These girls are in the ring, in the gym. They're working with these guys. They're rolling with these guys. They're wrestling guys as they learn how to train and wrestle. And as you, I guess, expand or move up, then, of course, you want to test your metal against some guys, especially guys who are of the same 
skill set as you. Jordan Grace, for instance, I've seen some of Jordan Grace's earlier matches where she was not so good. Now Jordan Grace is damn good, and she fights guys. Sue, Sue Young will fight a guy. And it's not me being a feminist and going, girl power, she can do this, she can do that. Again, you train to do a job. You train to do a sport, a profession. You train to do whatever. These girls are trained to wrestle. Just like if it was she was a small man, it shouldn't make any difference because she does not have a penis that she shouldn't wrestle with him. The penis only adds like maybe half an ounce because Angel all ain't that big anyway. So it does not wow. matter. Yes, I'm she, she's talking about y'all. She ain't talking about me over here. She's talking about y'all. <laughs> whatever, whatever the case may be, you know. Yeah, I'm, not getting, I'm just saying the fact <laughs> that the matter yeah. is, the woman just because she's smaller in stature means nothing because you've beat up on guys who are about ninety pounds, you know, and flying yeah. them around, and it's not a big like, oh my gosh, that's so wrong. You shouldn't fight that smaller guy. We're wrestling. We're not in you know, boxing or weight classes or what have you. It's get in there and who's the better wrestler, entertainer, performer, and what have you. And honestly and truly, a lot of these women are outclassing these boys big time, hey, making them look damn foolish. And I think it's the older generation of wrestlers who are not into the intergender wrestling because the only women that they know, know of, were wrestling women back in their day, which weren't really doing the same thing that these girls are doing now. But then, like, uh, I, would, I would admit that a lot of these females who are wrestling now are way tougher than I am. Uh, Maria Manic, uh, Maria, uh, Amazing Maria in, in IW Mid South, like these chicks doing death matches. Like, I'm not doing a death match. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I don't, I'm, I'm not, you're not hitting me with a light to me. Or thumbtacks. Like, I'm just not. And I'll admit to being a bitch. Whatever. You can say what you want to. These kids are way tougher than me. I've had, like I said, I wrestled with, with Ronnie Nicole, who's a friend of this show. And it was one of the most physically fucking tough matches I've had because it was like, it got to a point in the match where I was like, fuck, I'm going to have to fight this chick for real. In real life, I've, I've, I've done security work and I've worked in bars. Uh, and I've seen a lot of females who were not big in size. But was whooping raw men's asses. Um, I, I, you know, for me, I look at it like this. Ronda Rousey, I weigh 265, uh, at 5 foot 10. Ronda Rousey is like 5'1", 5'2", 135 pounds. Uh, if me and Ronda Rousey got into a fight, who would win? Probably her. You like, know what I'm saying? Don't let the size fool you. Like, exactly. I bring up Sue because I, you know, we're friends with Sue and I know Sue. I'm not a small girl and I'm not like, you know, a gym girl, but I'm considerably strong just in when I am. Sue, Sue is slighter. She's smaller. She's, I'm like, oh, this little thing. She's so cute. Sue picked me up in a hug and squeezed me and I almost broke a fucking rib. I was like, ow, please don't kill me, you know? And she was just hugging me, being nice. People underestimate women and they think that, you know, because this is a physical sport, that if you're going to get physical, you should probably do it with another woman because that would be, quote, unquote, fair. Here's my my opinion. I think that if women, uh, if female wrestlers, women wrestlers, want to be considered equal to male wrestlers, um, they need to stop competing for women's titles. Uh, when a promoter comes in and says, hey, uh, I want you to be our female champion. Uh, if, if you're one of those female wrestlers who feel like you can wrestle anybody, anytime, anywhere, uh, and you feel that women are equal to men, then you should refuse to be a women's champion. Like, no, I don't want to be a women's champion. I want to be your champion champion. And then yeah. if there's a gentleman who has an issue uh, with, with wrestling a female or putting a female over, that okay, how about you make it a shoot? Before the show even starts, y'all have a shoot match. And if she chokes you out, and guaranteed I've wrestled with a lot of fucking females in my life. And uh, for some strange reason, females for the most part are very slippery when it comes to wrestling. They'll find a way to get behind you and choke you out. You know what I'm saying? If she chokes you out, fucker, now you're losing to her in five minutes. Instead mm-hmm. of giving me a 12 to 15 minute match, now you're losing in five. And she's going to choke you out. Nobody wants to do that. Pride is too much. But I I will give props to Wrestle Circus. Um, They put on. And Fest. I was going back to Fest. Wrestle Circus. I think more people 
are familiar with it on a broader level. Um, you've had Tessa Blanchard be uh, a champion there at Wrestle Circus, um, and I'm missing another female. I um, can't think of who it was right now. Was it Candice or what? It might have been Candice. Yeah, it yeah. was Candice. Candice was also a champion there, and it wasn't a women's title. It was a quote unquote male title. I think it was the ringleader title, ringleader championship or something like that. No, um, ringmaster title. Yes. Ringmaster. And that was not like made for females. And she fought Brian Cage. Talking about get your shit in. Um, she wrestled mm. Brian Cage for that, who is a billion times bigger, quote unquote, stronger, and she beat him for that so title. Brian, Brian Cage, who is a physical, just a uh, physical model. Is willing to work with a female and put a female over. Hey, don't be and make it believable. Yes. Hey, don't be fluffy. Eighty, one hundred eighty pound heavyweight champion. You can do it too. Hey, fifty five year old fucking grizzled twenty year vet who only wrestles twice a year or twice a month in two towns. Hey, you can put a female over too. Hey, nineteen seventy five enhancement talent who hasn't done shit in this fucking business. Just shut the hell up. <laughs> we don't want you in the ring. Just get the fuck out. Is that what that was? Right, fuck. <laughs> I like, mean, yeah. I mean, you you have you have these progressive companies like Fest as well. Um, Su Young has been their champion. Um, not again, not a women's title. Their champion also Heidi Lovelace or Ruby Riot, as you know her now, uh, was their top champion. So the I think the big thing is in the independents, you should want to kind of buck the system and the system is right now the wwe being the 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 top of the industry and they're not promoting male on female wrestling and one of their reasons is the the country of canada where you know male on female violence can't be broadcast on television um and with their sponsorships and all that so they're just a little bit that's why you have this elseworth weirdness happening with oscar what have you but the fact of the matter is oscar she has dominated her male counterparts in this yes. ring, and we'll, we're we'll missing out on that. Yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk about that on another show because uh, we can talk about this. Is another one of those things that we, we can talk all night about bitching about professional wrestling and the state of professional wrestling. Uh, um, before we go there, I'm just going to say this. If you are not trying to be positive about professional wrestling, uh, then get the fuck out. If you don't like professional wrestling the way it is now, get the fuck out. Because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, it's not going to go back to the Gordon Solon days. It's not. You have some places. Oh, and even if there was, like I worked like Thursday nights in Bluefield, West Virginia, uh, USA Championship Wrestling. It's a very old school feel. They have studio tapings. Uh, they have like the enhancement squash matches or whatever. How many of those quote unquote old school fans do you actually think showed up in the building, Mika? Maybe five, maybe. But they, they had about half the building full. So they have about 40, 50 feet. Okay. And then, then you know, say you know, these people say how much they love old school wrestling. So get the fuck out of here with that shit. Um, but if you don't have anything positive to say about professional wrestling, then guess what? Professional wrestling probably doesn't need you any fuck away. Uh, and we bid you adieu. Anyway. Uh, Mika, what you got coming up this week? I do, I do. Honestly and truly, I'm looking to go to shows this week. I'm, I think I'm gonna actually head out to WWA4. I've missed them the past couple of weeks and they've been doing some stuff here Thursday nights in Atlanta. Um, there's also this weekend coming up. Um, man, there's something that's happening up in Orlando Thursday night. I, I'm, I don't know where I'm gonna be. Jimmy, Havoc is on this side of the pond, and I am a huge... Are you going to Florida? I'm going to Florida to be a mark, man, maybe, yeah. I love Jimmy Havoc. Um, MLW is doing their um, their tapings or what have you, and Jimmy Havoc's on the card, and... Whew, God, you want to talk about, you know, being a mark? That's, that's all me right there. Um, so I, I may pop down to Florida to see Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy fucking Havoc. And then this weekend, um, just kind of find some shows after that. I don't know. Stay tuned to my social media. If I make it to Florida, I will try to kidnap Jimmy Havoc for all you ladies out there. Y'all can help me hide him, um, you know, and keep him over here. Screw sending him back over there to wherever he don't belong. He belongs here in America with us. With this, me. Is, this is the week of IWA Mid-South for me. Thursday and Friday, I will be at the IWA Mid-South Arena. Uh, I- I have no idea what we'll be doing Friday. I don't know. I might try to find a Friday, a Friday show. Probably not. Uh, Thursday, I will be in Bluefield, West Virginia, once again, for USA Championship Wrestling. 
Uh, be sure to check them out, USA Championship Wrestling. Uh, every Thursday night, the show starts around, around 8 o'clock. It's live on um, on Facebook, and then they tape it. Uh, they, tape, they actually do a Facebook live, but they record it because it's shown on local TV uh, Friday nights. So check it out every Thursday if you can't get a chance. Uh, tell your friends, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, tomorrow, you be sure to check me out uh, doing a podcast, a live feed podcast. I get to do more bitching. Uh, Rambling Wrestling. Oh, wow. It's appropriately named, it sounds like. Yes, Rambling and Wrestling. Uh, I will be a guest on their show tomorrow night. I think the show starts at 630. Uh, once again, check out my, my social media um, to you know catch the show, I guess. Whatever. Anyway, anything else you got to plug, Mika? Um, nope. Going towards the end of the month, I'm looking forward to our um, AWE. We've got a show on July 29th. You have plenty of time to get your affairs in order to bring your ass to Atlanta, to the Opera Nightclub, to see the experience, what yeah, happens. I'm going to be in Buffalo the night before that, okay? I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about everybody else who I like. Anyway, um, once again, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Wrestling Podcast, the Angle Marks Podcast Network. Uh, last time, shout out all of our friends, Indy Customs, uh, Pro Wrestling World, our great friends at Behavior Driven. Uh, once again, if you like our show next week, and you know what I'm saying, you like our show, uh, be sure to check out our Patreon uh, at patreon.com backslash the Wrestling Nerdcast. Uh, huge shout out to all of our fucking Patreons right now for helping supporting this show. Um, because, you know, this is how we bring all this cool shit to you. Uh, speaking of, next week's guest, super excited. Speaking about a rule breaker and changing the game. Next week, we have the one, the only, Effie, will be a guest on the show, Mika. Oh, daddy's home. Yes. After that, we have the Mer- wrestling's only I guess wrestling's only mermaid, Aspen Rose. Only, only mermaid. We can ah, ask her. Only. She's the only mermaid that counts in our lives. Okay. Uh, and then we got our homie, rich homie, Juice, AJ Gray, will be running out the month of July for us. So we have a bunch of awesome, awesome shows. Uh, be sure to check us out every week on this show, on this, on this network. Uh, anyway, on behalf of our producer, the one, the only CW, uh, on behalf of my co-host, one half of the world's huge commentary team, the lover of waffles, the voice of the speech impediment, the receiver of all things unsolicited. Yeah, you thought I forgot about that, didn't you? Uh, the anonymous of affection, Miss Hashtag, what that mouth do, a.k.a. Feed Me Tacos, Miss Chicago Win. Did I forget one? That's enough, more than enough. Oh, did I say the voice of the speech impediment? Keep going. Do your I, clothes. I'm pretty sure I did. Anyway. Mickey Willis, I am your AIWF World Heavyweight Champion, your World Wrestling Grand Prix Champion, the National Syndicate Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, the Disrespectful Intellectual, the Southern Gentleman, the National Icon and Reality TV Star, the Morning Star, the Incredible Huck, Will Huckabee, saying peace out, uh, fuck your feelings, and support hey. the wrestling. Bye. You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network.